What do we know about the psychology of the Neanderthals? Exploring the psychology of an extinct ancient human is a speculative business for sure. That said, based on various methodologies, scholars who looked into this question have come up with several informed portraits of Neanderthal psychology. Part 1 of this video covers the psychology of the Neanderthal, while part 2 discusses how Neanderthal genes may affect your own personal psychology. For instance, evidence of their tool use showed that they were not as skilled as their Homo sapiens counterparts at coming up with novel tools, so they may have generally lacked creativity. Furthermore, analyses of air hunting practices suggest that they probably had effective long-term memory. There is evidence that they regularly went on extended hunts, but their short-term memory, again, based on the simplicity of their tool use, was likely somewhat limited. Osteopathic data suggest that the Neanderthals often suffered blows from each other, suggesting that they likely fought frequently. They may well then have been aggressive and somewhat antisocial. This evidence is often taken as indicating that they may have been relatively risk-taking in their behavior. Based on evolution-based conceptions of risk-taking behavior, such riskiness may cut across a variety of domains, including physical and social areas, among others. However, when it comes to the sociality of the Neanderthals, the data are somewhat complex. Socially, there is reason to believe that the Neanderthals had strong kin-based connections, and they cared deeply about individuals within their groups. Information on this front comes from the widespread evidence of Neanderthal burials, found across a diverse range of geographical areas. Such burials were consistently done with care, showing a concern for particular individuals. So perhaps, Neanderthals had some level of compassion, particularly within family units. From an evolutionary behavioral perspective, one fact that is particularly intriguing about the Neanderthals pertains to their small group size, indicating they were not very socially developed. In contrast, Homo sapiens formed groups of up to 150 individuals, long before agriculture entered the scene. Importantly, these groups were mixed, in terms of relatedness. These groups include a mixture of kin and non-kin, and the basics of our social psychology seems to be largely rooted in negotiating such social contexts. This largely entails building bonds with both non-family and family, and forming long-standing coalitions accordingly. This fact about Homo sapiens is a landmark element of our evolution. Once human beings started forming coalitions with non-kin, group size increased. And once our ancestors started to live in larger groups, they were capable of utilizing resources associated with large groups, such as building armies, in both literal and metaphorical fashions. Once we started to form large non-kin based in groups, the stage was set for the advent of civilization. Research into the issue of Neanderthal group size suggests that the Neanderthals never made this great evolutionary leap. Such data suggest that the typical group size for Neanderthals was only about 8 to 10 individuals. Thus, Neanderthals would have never experienced strong evolutionary pressures to develop attributes that help one negotiate large-scale human societies. This constrained group size feature of the Neanderthals leads anthropologists to hypothesize that the Neanderthals would be quite lacking in socially oriented behaviors and traits. This prediction is consistent with work on predictors of social anxiety in modern adults, showing that a lack of extensive early socialization tends to predict social anxiety later in life. Based on what we know about the social worlds of Neanderthals, they likely had relatively limited opportunities for social interactions in early life, compared with ancestrally modern humans. Thus, the many traits that are so critical for modern humans needed to negotiate our complex social worlds would likely never have evolved to typify the Neanderthals. Therefore, they likely did not have strong social connections outside of their kin units. They may have been highly xenophobic, they may not have been particularly empathetic, and they may have been high in social anxiety. As they would not have had regular social experiences that would, over time, tone down social anxiety. How and why did Neanderthals go extinct? Archaeologists are in two camps over exactly why Neanderthals went extinct. Some believe the Neanderthals died off because of climate change. Others think modern humans wiped them out with better tools, weapons, or social organization. Some argue that technological and cultural advances could have been the tipping point. 
because humans were spreading into Neanderthal territory, it's likely that those leading the charge arrived in small numbers, compared with the overall population of the Neanderthals. Despite this disadvantage, the skills they brought with them could have allowed them to hunt, settle land, and otherwise use resources more efficiently than the original residents. Eventually, their numbers would swell, making them even more powerful. A smaller number of anatomically modern humans could overwhelm a much larger Neanderthal population that did not have this technology and culture. It's not a question of humans just being more intelligent than Neanderthals. They had more tools and a more complex social organization. Technology spreads much more rapidly from person to person, especially when coupled with superior learning abilities. Are Neanderthal genes in your DNA making you unhappy, neurotic, and aggressive? We like to joke about people behaving like cavemen, but it turns out that that old saying has some truth to it. In fact, residual Neanderthal DNA in the human genome may make some modern humans truly insufferable. About 40,000 years ago, Homo sapiens became the dominant form of hominid across the globe, and Neanderthals took a backseat in the history of our species. However, the Neanderthals' extinction has been, according to modern biological anthropologists, greatly exaggerated, because their genes survive in our DNA. A test showed that participants with a higher percentage of Neanderthal DNA were more likely to experience social fear, promiscuity, depression, bipolar tendencies, autistic tendencies, and being less imaginative. Modern genomics research shows that unlike what was previously thought, the demise of the Neanderthals on this planet was not exactly a typical extinction. In fact, for thousands of years, some degree of hybridization was taking place between the Neanderthals and modern humans. Many of us have the marks of these hybridizations in our DNA right now, but people vary from one another in terms of their amount of Neanderthal DNA. Given the fact that most personality traits show some inheritable component, researchers sought to examine if a person's degree of Neanderthal genes is significantly related to a variety of personality traits. This component is known as the Neanderthal quotient. These traits, based on anthropological research, may have characterized our ancient Neanderthal ancestors. In exploring the personality correlates of the Neanderthal quotient, the research found that it does, in fact, show small but significant relationships with several personality variables. This occurs in ways that are predicted from existing evolution-based models of the Neanderthals. Thus, in trying to determine why someone is socially fearful, anxious, or promiscuous, part of the answer may be something that psychologists likely have never thought of, until now. Remarkably, the answer may partly be explained by how much Neanderthal DNA that person has in his or her genome. The research into the Neanderthal quotient gives a glimpse into the life of our ancient ancestors, and how their genes still continue to influence us today. Researchers compared the Neanderthal quotients of 200 Europeans, with their results on several psychological surveys. Researchers found that Neanderthal quotient was positively related to such traits as neuroticism, social fear, anxiety, and promiscuity, while being negatively related to traits such as extroversion, agreeableness, and imagination. The findings suggest that high levels of Neanderthal quotient tend to correspond to social fear, anxiety, and depressive tendencies. This constellation of results is also consistent with the conception of Neanderthals as being ill-suited for large-scale social living. Researchers were also able to identify associations between Neanderthal DNA variants and human traits, such as the likelihood of sneezing after eating dark chocolate, a sense of direction, mosquito bite frequency, body type, and being physically strong, among other traits. Several genes that impact our risks for many common diseases may also have been derived partially from Neanderthal DNA. The researchers found gene snippets related to diseases involving the skin, blood, immune system, and addiction that matched parts of the human genome. The researchers first identified 135,000 genetic variations, also known as SNPs, in Neanderthals, and compared that information with the data on humans. They found that genetic variations in the Neanderthal genome correlated with genetic risk traits for a myriad of medical conditions that affect Homo sapiens. Some variants influence the risk for a skin disease called actinic keratosis, an age-related condition that is exacerbated by too much sun exposure. 
It's very possible that whatever those gene variants were evolved for had been protective. But, with our current levels of sun exposure, in our current environment, the gene variant is very bad for us. The findings related to depression are especially intriguing, because other research has identified the same genetic variants in humans, as being influential in risk for certain neurological and psychiatric illnesses. This doesn't mean Neanderthal genes are necessarily making us depressed and anxious. But it does mean that some pieces of Neanderthal DNA increase the risk, and other pieces of Neanderthal DNA decrease the risk. What the research indicates is that there are certain dispositions, that someone with high Neanderthal DNA may have. So, if you're very Neanderthal in your genome, that plays out in your psychology and behavior. However, not everyone with a high Neanderthal quotient is destined for being insufferable, because there are many factors that need to be taken into consideration. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed this content, please destroy the like button, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends, and leave a thought-provoking comment.